My first memory of playing video games comes from when I was only four years old. Around this time in 1985-86, me and my sisters were always taken care of by a babysitter at my parents' office in one of the back rooms. There we had to play games with each other and watch TV together. Outside we had a place to play as well, as there were not only swings and a monkey bars, there was also a wooden house that was about a story and a half up in the air that we had to climb up a ladder to get to. It had like these crisscrut wooden things so that you could see in and out of the house at the same time to see what your kids were doing. And it was big enough to fit like me and my sisters up there all at once, you know, as long as you were two to six years old. It was around this time I also met the neighbor whose backyard also bordered the office. And he was the cool older kid that I started to hang out with a lot and play with. Now one day, however, he invited me into his house to play video games. Now for me, I'm just like, I don't know what video games are. All I know so far is I have a cassette player that Sesame Street characters answer questions of if I hit the correct button and it suddenly magically knows to go to a different place on the cassette tape. But, uh, but this was a whole new experience. Once inside, he booted up the Nintendo and showed me one of the titles he had. One of those two was Jaws. <laughs> I was like, how is this working? I'm like pushing buttons and they're moving on the screen. This was so cool. All right, cool, we're on a boat. I wonder if we can dock. Nope, all right, so I guess we'll... Hey, crab, come back here, crab. Navigation was easy too, it's not like Super Mario Brothers where you have to keep repetitively pressing A to make sure you don't fall down into the water. Here you just move the directional controls wherever you want to move wherever you want and hit the B button to shoot people. Well, sea creatures. You don't kill people in Nintendo games. Later, they give you a bonus stage where you drop bombs from your airplane to destroy jellyfish. Yeah, this is a little bit overkill. You can't actually control the plane in this stage. All you're doing is hitting the buttons as the jellyfish swim around in different patterns. But destroying them all nets you some bonus shells. Sometimes when we'd play, Jaws would randomly appear and we'd take turns trying to kill him. It was pretty long, because as you can see here, it takes forever to whittle down his energy. Yeah, we would fail, like, all the time. Yeah, Jaws, I'm ready for you. Take that and that. Man, I've hit him so many times and he still won't die, and he follows me up or down wherever I go. Wow, I finally got to the second health bar out of him. What is that, like... Two of 22? We always wondered why our gun never worked really well. He could always whittle away at his energy, but he would always just vanish and return with full health. We would just fly, we would just sail around, shooting at random fish, trying to kill Jaws until we eventually died. And yes, we did know about that glitch where you could swim at the top of the sea and Jaws can't touch you. Of course, all the other sea creatures still can. One thing I didn't know when I was five was how to play and beat this game. Now, a whole 25 years later, is it possible for me to pick up this game learn how to play it, and finally defeat Jaws. Let's find out. First, no game facts. I'm going to read just the manual and try to figure out everything I can 
from that. Luckily, I found a PDF of it on the internet in just a few seconds. It's a good thing a lot of people like me are nostalgic about video games in the past because anything can be found with just a click of a button on the internet now. This can't be. There has never been a great white in these warm tropical waters. Never. This is more than just a coincidence. This shark appears to be possessed, as if it's hunting you down like it's personal. So, it's the Jaws from Jaws 2 that likes to go around killing Roy Scheider's kids. You'd better prepare yourself and strike back before it's too late. Um, why not simply not go in the water? I mean, a shark can't hunt you on land. Remember, this is some unbelievably powerful eating machine you're dealing with. You collect shells and use them like money to buy a transmitter to detect jaws and then go to each of the seaports again to increase your power. Cool, it says I can buy a sub to fight jaws if I get a high enough score. Those stars and crabs give you points, so the score actually serves a purpose in this game, but one hit from the sub changes you into the diver. After you've killed Jaws, is a first-person scene where you must force Jaws out of the water with lights, then ram him. You only have three lights, but you can buy more. Okay, I'm ready to play. I'm ready to defeat Jaws. Sometimes you attack regular fish, then Jaws just randomly appears, like out of nowhere. This can be pretty terrifying. Anyway, I just find the other port and get the detection machine to find Jaws. So... Is that it? Where's the other port? The screen has borders, I can't go anywhere else. Unless I'm supposed to go all the way to the other side, back to the port I just came from. Which doesn't make sense logically, but Nintendo logic, I can already assume this is what you're supposed to do. Yep, I get there and my power level rises from 1 to 2. After this, I assume I have to go back to the other port and keep going back and forth until my power is maxed out. Here, the difficulty starts to rise along with your power. As you get to the detector, you then find super fast mana rays you have to worry about mixed in with the regular stuff. Then, after your power raises to two, the jellyfish that used to raise only upward now like to move diagonally and try to trick you and they will actually follow your direction. Eventually they try to add some variety by having a level that's just manta rays and sharks and a level that's just jellyfish and even so far as to just have sharks that are even three or four based on how powerful you are in the game. However, the thing you don't want to do is die. Yeah, I say that like it should be kind of obvious, but when you die, you lose half your shells and you lose one of your power, which means you have to navigate the entire duration of the board again. It seems pretty easy because you don't really hit things too often when you're at level 1 and 2 power. But as soon as you increase in power, the random encounters increase. And this is where the game gets very, very annoying. Oh, hey, what's that? Huh, did I get anything? I didn't really hear a sound effect. Oh, sweet, it's the sub. And it moves twice as fast as the diver, making it easier to avoid everything. I then realized that Jaws only heals two life bars every time you enter another side stage. It doesn't matter if Jaws was in that side stage sea battle or not, he will always heal two bars, so you actually have to be actively tracking him. However, the sub vanishes after just one hit, which is really annoying because you don't get it back. You actually have to find it randomly scattered around the, uh, the map in the most inconvenient and out-of-the-way possible place. It's not really necessary to go after this sub because you'll gain enough power that you'll be able to defeat Jaws pretty easily just as the diver. And don't even get me started on the boat. The boat is the most worthless thing. Sure, it has some cannonballs to shoot at Jaws, but sometimes they like to shoot the opposite direction and you can't get it to turn around and face Jaws. And even then, you're not even going to be able to hit him much until you he destroys it and you become the diver. Oh yeah, and he destroys it within three seconds, so good luck ever trying to use that as a tactic. Also, another thing I hate about the sub is it doesn't have the glitch at the top of the screen to hide from Jaws, so don't try to hide that way. Oh yeah, so it's at this point in the game, I'm traveling around, and all of a sudden, I'm just hitting 
every single few spaces another battle because my power is so high. Now, and you know what? I'm hitting so much I'm not even bothering to collect shells. I'm just kind of sitting up in the corner waiting for the level to end because I've already got 99 shells and you can't collect any more. After a while, you just get so mind-numbingly bored because you're running across five to six of these battles each second and usually about every two or three of those, you're having another bonus stage that takes up time with getting you extra shells you don't need because you've already reached the max. Well, I finally ran into Jaws on purpose now that I have enough power and it's time to finally kill him. Yeah, take that, Jaws. And now I find I can beat him fairly quickly. I mean, once you get to power level 6, it's pretty obvious your gun is a lot more powerful now, and you might even be tempted just to tackle him now instead of waiting to get up to 9, which is the max that you can go. Alright, now it's to this first person boat stage, which is like really freaking hard. Alright, so I got button A, if I push that I'll shoot at a light and Jaws will just jump right out in the water. And then I have to ram at full speed. Alright, so I fail and I'm kicked back out to the map and Jaws has regained his entire full power, negating that entire thing about two for every stage like previously, because if you fail this, oh, you really get punished. Once you're at max power, you can go to the ports again and start collecting lights so that you have a lot more chances to try to defeat Jaws in the first person stage. Now that I'm finally at nine and have like one or two extra lights, I'm just ready to get this game over with and finally kill that stupid big fish once and for all. It obviously has to be past the first line at the bottom of the stage, but then also lining yourself up is really hard as well. I mean, look at that! How was neither of those a hit? Yeah, come on, Jaws! Mm. Mm. Yeah! Yes! I finally defeated you after all these years, Jaws! Your carcass is mine! Well, that was a pretty weak ending. Jaws for Nintendo is not actually that bad. A lot of people say it's one of the worst games ever made, but that is totally not really that accurate. I mean, sure, it's not a good game by any standards, but there's nothing in there that's actually game-breaking or glitchy as all hell. I've seen a lot worse on the Nintendo. I mean, basically, it gets really frustrating once you get to power level 4 or 5 because you're randomly running into uh, so many battles. And the last ramming battle, while annoying, is so satisfying when you finally pierce Jaws right through his face. But for the most part, this game actually doesn't feel like a Nintendo game. It feels like an arcade game that was ported. I mean, it's because it has only like the one or two like mini stages and then just ends very shortly. It almost seems like a game that's completely extending itself just to extend itself. That's my view on it, and though it was fun to play it again after all these years, I'm probably not going to touch it again before I die. Now, Jaws was released for Nintendo in 1987. However, the Jaws video game saga is not over. There were five, yes, five more Jaws games after this. The second Jaws came in 1989 and was called Jaws the Computer Game and was released for the Amiga and Commodore 64. However, it is more of an action game where you go around as a little mini sub that looks like an eyeball and just start shooting all kinds of random creatures until you eventually kill Jaws.
That same year, 1989, they also created JAWS for the ZX Spectrum, though from the pictures I was able to find on the internet, no video footage I could find, it is more of an adventure game where you're traveling the world collecting items, bigger boats, and other things as, as a means to try and defeat JAWS. And then after that, there's a huge gap. For the fourth game, Jaws Unleashed would not come out until 2006 for the PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. This is a free roaming world where you eat sea creatures and people. Finally, there's Jaws Ultimate Predator that was released in 2011 for the 3DS and Wii. Yeah, those all look pretty fun, right? Well, there's also a cell phone game, but nobody really counts those. Next time, I'll show you the other video game I played while at my friend's house, and just show you how messed up of a game it really was. Mm -hmm.